Yeah, you read the title right. I'm going to lift this car right here with about $20 in filament and these four 3D printed parts. Hold up, we actually need to print these things first. The results, they are amazing, but we got to start at the start. Let's get right into printing these things, which went actually surprisingly smoothly. All right, we're preheated. Let's unload this PLA and get started with the PETG. It'll be interesting to see how this goes. I don't have a lot of experience printing with PETG. All right, and with that, we just need to select our print and tell it to start. Here is our finished part. PETG, I heard, is very sticky, so we are just going to let this cool off, and then it should just pop right off. There we go. Let's see how easy the sports come off. Ooh, I was kind of worried about that. This time lapse shows just how difficult it was to get the supports off, but I did get them off good enough considering the fact that they're just going in a car. And we've made our way back to where I was at the beginning of this video. These models were available for free online from some other Volvo at C70 enthusiasts. These are rear spring spacers. They go just underneath the spring, just pushing it up to increase your preload effectively. And these are front top hat spacers and they go right about here. I did also have to spend about 10 bucks on these bolts, which I'm hoping are the correct ones. If not, I'll have to make a quick hardware store run. Considering the front is just top hat spacers, it should be a lot easier. So let's do that first, jack up the front of the car and get started. I've done this before on the Crown Vic, pretty much the exact same process. And I've also replaced the front coilovers on the RSX. So this will be absolutely no problem for me. All right, let's get this thing jacked up and get started. I think you can hear this, but it's raining outside. And it's making the work out here today ever so cozy. Next step is hammering the studs out of this top hat. This was kind of ridiculous. I pretty much had to get this started by putting a wrench on it and using the threads to suck it through um, this bolt in the bottom here. And this top one here, I got by using the jack to jack up this block of wood, which was touching the screwdriver, which was through the bottom hole. And that would allow it to pry it up. And then that lined up this hole enough to where I get the bolt through. And after that, like I said, I had to use the threads to pull this bolt through, but it is through now. So moving on. So now we're running into the problem of using bolts instead of studs. As you saw earlier, I hammered out the studs. Now these are bolts. However, I don't really have any way to get a wrench up in there onto those. So I'm gonna have to figure something out. All right, I managed to get a wrench on this one here. how to get these bolts tight considering I can't get a wrench up in there and I can't even get my hand up to this one. So I'm gonna go grab lunch and think about what I wanna do. Got some nachos for lunch and I think I found what I need. Um, however, obviously they are not cheap and they ship from the United Arab Emirates. So they're not gonna be here anytime soon. So that's not my preferred solution, but this for 39 bucks right here. That's exactly what I need. I'll have to do some thinking and see if I can figure out any other way to do it, but I have no idea. So I don't actually have a welder yet. I've been meaning to learn to weld for a long time and I haven't gotten around to it, but I have a buddy who lives like five, 10 minutes away and he does. So I'm just gonna pull both struts out and then I'm gonna stop by his place and have him weld those bolts to the top hat. More work, more fun. As a side note, I looked into doing the rears. They look like they might be even less fun. Well, that didn't take hardly any time at all. As we all know, the hard part is putting it back together. Let me just hammer these studs out of here and then load these up into a different car and drive over to my friends and have them tack weld the new bolts in. Welcome to my friend's garage. Of course, there's the part I always forget about, which is prep. Just like with paint, you gotta do a lot of prep with welding, which means, just like paint, I probably wouldn't be that good at welding. So 
So this friend is a golf cart project that's a work in progress, but we're gonna try it out here. Uh-oh. Just like that, this thing's lifted up here in the front. Um, I was hoping to tackle all four corners today, but that just isn't gonna happen. Plus I've looked it up and the rear seems to be even worse than the front. I didn't do any measuring before and after, but this definitely looks like more. Maybe you'll be able to tell in the edit, but it really wasn't that bad aside from the, you know, the detour over to my friends to get him to weld those studs. In. So when I was setting this thing down or anything, I did not hear any weird noises. Uh, here, I'll set, your, set the mic right here on the tire. Like, you know, you're not hearing any creaks or anything, so I think it's just good. Anyways, I'll see you tomorrow when I'm get started on the rear. Well, with a little bit of space made, let's get working here. I saw a little trick online that'll hopefully help us not need to use a bottle jack. Let me see if I can find a piece of wood to utilize it. There we go. Here's our trick. This will be perfect once I cut it to length. Let's get started taking this thing apart. So this is the trick I read about on the internet. If you just pop out the little bump stop here, which I still have no idea how I'm gonna put this back in, but if you just pop that out and then hammer a piece of wood into here where it goes, then in theory, that should hold this arm down so I can just bolt this guy right back in after I'm done. That's the theory at least. So what I've got going on here is I have my 3D printed part. It's supposed to sit right down at the bottom of the shock here. However, this dust cover is preventing it from going over and it doesn't seem like it's designed to be removed in any way. So I need to figure out some way to get around this. So this here is my ingenious solution. I got a bunch of extensions, hammered on them, and well, came right off. I don't know if we'll be able to press that back on, but hopefully now we can install our 3D printed part. And that sits on there just like that and holds our coil up. This was a lifesaver because it was just almost lined up. I just had to do a little bit of prying with my expert pry bar here and a little hammering with the hammer and it popped right on. Now that I have a strategy, this side should be twice as easy, right? So what I just did in my haste was very stupid and I am very lucky. I had the coil over laying here like this and guess where the spring was pointed? It was pointed over there and I forgot to put my spring compressors on. Unfortunately, um, as you can see, it just shot that way and I'm all good. But if I'd had it pointed a different way, that could have been not so good. All right, moment of truth. How's it look? I'd say that looks pretty tall. Again, I didn't measure, but not bad. I'm gonna go for a drive. I'll let you know how it is when I get back. The next day, I actually took the time to take it out and drive it off road. So let's cut to that really quick and then we'll cut back to the shop to hear my thoughts. Um, uh, there's a spot here where it used to scrape where it doesn't anymore. Let me just show you real quick. So I used to scrape coming off of this little hill here and then again, going up the other one on the other side. And as I believe you can hear, no scraping. Now let's go up this one. This is right where I'd scrape, right there. Not anymore though. Just no problem. Well, I hope that lets you know kind of what it looks like. Um, as you saw in the last part, I haven't been easy on this so far. I've done that a few times now, and well, they haven't fallen out of the car yet, so I think we're pretty good. <laughs> Knock on some fake wood trim. And yeah, like I said, it scraped those spots before, and now it doesn't, so that's really great. So I definitely tell it's out of alignment, which makes sense. You mess with the suspension, I need to align it. 
Um, this might be the first time you see it on the channel, but I do have a home alignment kit, so we'll try that out. Also, you can definitely tell that in the rear, it's a lot stiffer, or rather, there's been preload added. It doesn't have quite as much travel before it hits the stiffer part of the spring, if I'm saying that right. But unless you're off-roading, like I did just do, it really isn't noticeable. I think I'm pretty stoked with this. The parts seem to still be in the car. Yeah, obviously, stay subscribed to see any updates on this thing. That is it for me this week. I'm already one day over. It's Monday, um, but I got it done. Thanks so much for watching. Steve Wallace might not work on cars, but I think if he did, it would be time for a step two. Oh, definitely feels like I deserve this today.